everyone and welcome to my channel we are here for another weekly journal finally because uh, the last couple of weeks i uh, didn't manage to film the weekly journal and now i'm happy that i'm here again um for who's new here my name is catalina and i'm the person behind by catalina designs and i'm coming here on this channel to share with you crochet tutorials and also trying to come and meet you here to talk about crochet to chat about what i was um doing uh, during the weeks uh, what my projects were and of course um to share with you about what i um, learned what i know about crochet so if this is something that you want to follow, then please subscribe to my channel and I will be really grateful for that. So yeah, two weeks not being here, I will tell you more about it in a bit. Well, last week my daughter was in vacation in a school break so um, I wasn't planning to film a, a weekly journal but I uh, said okay if I will have time if something will happen my daughter will have something to do something else going to play with someone then okay I will do it but otherwise uh, I will stay calm about it and <laughs> it's fine i can catch up uh, in the next week but one week before i wanted to film the weekly journal but i have two days in a week while i can uh, do the filming thingy and so on which are tuesdays and thursdays and uh, usually on tuesdays if i have a tutorial to film about that i'm doing the intros whatever i need to prepare for the video tutorial so i can edit it on wednesday and um, i did all of that on tuesday then on wednesday i was about to edit the video tutorial for the coty sweater but there were some technical issues some of my uh, footage um, didn't work out on my laptop i don't know why i needed to find out why to uh, download the software that will convert those videos so i will be able to edit them i was pretty stressed about it because i didn't want it to just remake that footage all again and not being able to publish the video tutorial as i wanted so two weeks ago um so wednesday didn't manage to to finish with the video tutorial for the coty sweater so i needed to do it thursday when i uh, had the, my frame for the weekly journal uh, filming the weekly journal so of course that i wasn't able to film the weekly journal on thursday and everything messed up but yeah even if i'm saying that i'm not a planner with this kind of stuff i need to plan them out because uh, otherwise um, uh, i think i told you about it uh, these two days are the days when i'm home alone up to three o'clock or two o'clock until my daughter is coming back from home so somehow i feel more comfortable to go over there and there and there and film and talk and uh, do some things like that so yeah so this was uh, what happened that's why i wasn't able to <laughs> do the stuff but i'm back the school started thanks god thank god that it was only one week break so now i'm back with um, with the regular schedule and i hope that it will be like this for a long period of time so anyways, in the meantime, I have the video tutorial and the written pattern for the Cody sweater. I'm really happy about it and I was uh, wearing it a lot in the last period because the weather is cool enough to wear it and I love it because I can take like um, a jacket on but that is not that thick so somehow I'm uh, keeping myself warm with the, with the Cody sweater which is nice um 
even if I didn't have uh, too much time for uh, different other stuff like filming or things like that, I did crochet a lot. So I finished the big lamp blouse, which I'm really happy about it and I'm wearing it right now. I'm about to finish the pattern to send it to Expression Fiber Arts because this pattern will be available on their website as well and uh, maybe afterwards it will be available on my website again because you know it's an old design that I recreated and uh, I filmed the video tutorial again so everything will be brand new again so yeah I'm really happy that I'm able to bring back to life some old uh, designs because I'm really happy about how I was creating back then. I think I was <laughs> more uh, into complicated stuff than uh, easier one, which should be at the beginning, but yeah, I don't know. So this pattern, now I graded up to five extra large because the original design was up to extra large, I think. So not really many sizes. And uh, yeah, I can wait to share with you all. At this moment, I am at the stage where I was finishing the, um, um, the written pattern. Today I took some photos and some videos and everything with everything dressed up and uh, yeah, hopefully I will uh, be able to edit the video tutorial tomorrow so I can send everything to the uh, Expression Fiber Arts and then to see when the magic will happen and this pattern will be available. Because I still have the study night blouse that is um, like on hold and um, even if i didn't uh, have a deadline for this blouse but somehow the pressure was there to finish it and to send it and everything and um, because i didn't finish this one i was uh, shy to ask about the story night blouse but as soon as I'm sending this, uh, um, this uh, to them, I will ask about the Starry Night Blouse because I really want to share that pattern with you and uh, the video tutorial. So yeah, things. <laughs> I hope that things will start to get moving and uh, to show and share with you some of the things that I already finished. So yeah, this is the blouse. As uh, I said, I was uh, ripping off at the beginning because it was uh, too long and uh, now I'm kind of okay with the, with the length and with everything. So I hope that everything will be fine in the end uh, and uh, you will be happy to make this, uh, this blouse. I will talk a bit more about it into the video tutorial, so now I have a one finished project. Now, last week I was talking about the um, what would you think about a crochet along for the mosaic sweater, which I have over here, I finished all the yarn, so now I don't have anything uh, to work on and I didn't order something because Somehow I do have some doubts about this and um, about the colors, especially. I don't know, it's too bright for me to wear it, but I will have to finish this, uh, this sample because I work so much on it and I am so close to the finish and I don't want to give up uh, uh, now, but I do want to change a few things because uh, I do think that it's um, too oversized I wanted this design to be more like a closer fit and not that wide. So I was searching over the internet because I know that I told you that it will look nice. Well, this was my opinion into some uh, ombre palette colors. So I was searching on the internet like um, ombre color packs yarn. So the only thing that I got, and uh, let me show you, there weren't too many options over there. So I know that I, I, not, I didn't even um, unpack this, but it did came a few days ago, maybe last week. 
so I ordered from Hobby. This is not a sponsored um, uh, video or something. They didn't send me the yarn for free. I just ordered it. So I was finding this Malaga yarn in this purple shades. Hmm? What do you think? In the color packs, you could find like um, a rainbow, uh, also pastel rainbow. I think it was something with gray and blacks. It was this one. I think it was also something with reds. I don't remember. Maybe we will scroll down over here and see um, what it is. This is also a medium weight, uh, weight yarn. The is 100% uh, acrylic, this but um, you know that I don't mind to work with acrylic as long as I will um, wear it and it's pretty nice it's not uh, it's not that bad Dee -dee 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 -dee. yeah so because it was the only option maybe I I, I could look for the same yarn and try to uh, pack up some uh, ombre colors, but I was too lazy to do that and think about the colors that I want so my uh, My thing was to just uh, search over the internet and someone give me the palette and then I could uh, order the yarn so the easiest way was with this hobby yarn, so I did it So now now I am about to start all over again Yep um because i want a closer fit and i do need to see how to make those uh, increases to work on a closer fit the first part of the yoke is perfect the second part i i need to um, increase less or maybe started with the first part as well to increase that. I need to figure it out because with these increases on that design is uh, pretty difficult because you need a certain number of stitches of so the increases to work. And uh, yeah, maybe I will recreate it and add making a round yoke, maybe making a square rectangle, whatever. I don't know. So at this point, I know I said about the um, working together on this project but until i don't have everything settled and a pattern written i don't know if i will be able to do that anyways because i was saying about the crochet along at the end of the video there weren't too many uh too many people uh, that uh, wanted to do that so yeah we will see for now we will keep it like that i'm so sorry for the ones that uh, got excited about this project to work along with me on it but um yeah things are changing because this is what it is this is what it is now another thing that i'm really happy with how it's turning on but i did had to uh, reveal uh, unravel everything so because uh, i wasn't happy with the with the yoke this is a saddle or inset sleeve um, design and uh, i was filling those short rows that i need them over there but somehow i didn't want it to start with single crochet stitches because um i don't have too many rows to increase the front and back panel at the beginning so if i will add those uh, those uh, short rows in single crochet to work the short rows actually to be able to pass over them then uh, um i won't have too many rows or increases to make uh, on the rest of the yoke so i started all over again and started without the ribbing to be able to make the the neckline in uh, double crochet and then i will add the ribbing and this is how it's looking with stripes and blocks because uh, i said that i will do it this way i'm almost done with the length meaning that i have only the ribbing to work i already started and then i will start into the sleeves and i don't know with this uh, construction but the fit is amazing so i do love it i want to 
uh, make this technique to get better at it because I think it's the best way to wear crochet sweaters. Yes. <laughs> So this is something that I want to finish, um, I don't know if this week is working pretty fast with it because it's a uh, now medium weight yarn and uh, with a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook with uh, double crochet stitches so it's working pretty pretty fast. Um, another thing I was <laughs> starting to work on it was a version of the spr sprinkle sweater and this is with bulky weight yarn. I wanted a bit uh, a more uh, baggy version so the original version is more like a, it's kind of a closer fit so I wanted to be like uh, to make maybe a medium size which is in the pattern and I started working with this bulky yarn and I didn't like it. It's too heavy, it's too like a blanket and i didn't uh, like it i wanted to test it out because the original design is worked also with medium weight yarn this is how the yarn is listed for from the brand um but it has like um uh next to the yarn you have those sprinkles which is another fiber it's kind of like a cord or like a ribbon small 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 ribbon that is um uh, together with the yarn so because of that i do think that the thickness of the yarn or the weight of the yarn is more than medium uh so that's why i try to work with uh, bulky yarn to see how it feels and i didn't like it it's too heavy, it's okay for a chunky sweater that you want, but because of this dance stitches, then I didn't like it. So I switched to a medium weight yarn <laughs> and now I love it. It's more flowy, it has a nicer drape, uh, it's a baggy how I want it to be. So now I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the result and i will continue like that and um, another thing that i was working for this um, sprinkle sweater i have a plan with this uh, with this sweater so uh, but it's not like to releasing a pattern or something because the pattern is already there but um, i do have something in mind with it so that's why i'm making it and because i was working on uh, different projects that needed to be filmed you know that i need um, evening project uh, for the couch to just uh, sit and just enjoy some crochet knitting moments i do have some um, a knitting light sweater that i think i showed you over here work with uh, Langyar socks actually or will will are they happy socks i don't know how it's called the yarn the thing is that it's a sock yarn and i'm knitting a sweater i wanted a summer light sweater knitted and i'm using with that sock yarn eight millimeters needles and i do love the everything but uh, for that one i started to film a video tutorial and i'm the, at the point to split the front and uh, and back for the armhole and i stopped and i never kind of managed to film that section so i'd be able to go farther with it and yeah so what i did I'm keeping in a jar some yarn ends. I don't know, I'm not making a migrimis or something to be to use them to fill them up. Uh, but somehow I was putting in that jar all the ends. Not all the ends, because some of them I was throwing them away, of course. But from time to time I was uh, putting in that jar. And one day I realized that I have uh, so many ends that they are not like short ends. You know, when from... Um, one last uh, uh, skein of yarn or ball of yarn you get with five seven meters ten meters maybe 20 meters of yarn you don't have another uh, ball of yarn or some other ball of yarn for the same yarn to use them away in a different project so somehow you ended up with that um, 
that yarn not being able to do anything with it so i was putting them in that jar and i did let me show you oh. so i did some cakes out of them some i only did two for now and i think i'm done with the with the with the ends those ends and now i will have to wait to finish some other project and i started to knit with them Ta-da! now it started with because i had shorter strands then uh, longer then shorter again and longer then longer so it's kind of getting into uh, stride motion <laughs> um i am making knots so i'm trying to make them as secure as possible and uh, i don't know maybe in the end i will use some fabric glue to secure them even better and this is what is it is i do love it it's funny because it was so relaxing to work on this project because i was finding yarn from years ago i think i have this thin purple yarn because i'm not using the same wig all the way i'm just uh, changing i'm using whatever i have so i think i had bulky medium decay <laughs> fingering all the thingies and it was funny because i was working oh this yarn is from that sweater that i made oh this yarn is from that oh this yarn is from that it was funny to remember and uh, from all the projects or sometimes i was uh, just oh when i was using this yarn what i was doing it with, with it so it was funny to work on it so now i keep working i'm curious how long it will be because i do want to use everything that i'm uh, gather with this ends and at some point of course that i will still have 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 but i cannot do it at, uh, I mean, I need to stop on a certain length with it, but yeah, I'm really happy. I don't know now if it will be a, a sweater or a dress. I do have this and uh, I do have some uh, leftovers from the uh, different, uh, different projects like the um, paint sweater that I did, but they are too long. I think the stripes will be too, too, too thick. I don't know anyways i do have this thickness over here is pretty thick but i will see i don't know this uh, this right now i'm getting to the good vibes cardigan yarn left over so it's funny i think it's funny and it's a good way to um to use up those uh, those things that you don't have anything to do with them so yeah this was the were the projects that i was working on and um i do have uh, so i have uh, only i have only two people that wanted to try on this uh, crochet along but as i said i need to uh, recalculate everything and start working with that ombre yarn i'm curious how it will look like and uh then i have from um, from kim i have a question about um about how to make the yoke so she she asked because she's making probably she's making a sweater or she's interesting about this um she needs like a larger um uh, larger yoke to meet a certain size but then she wants she has a small waist and she wants to um shape the sweater so it won't be that ba baggy and over here so okay so let me tell you about the the decreases and how how to get from a larger yoke or bust to a smaller a smaller waist for a sweater so there are many things, uh, many uh, ways to do that. But first of all, the most important thing is to think about the fabric because 
if you have one centimeter boot size, let's just say the sweater is one centimeter or your actual measurement, and you need to go uh, slimmer or uh, smaller for the waist and around 80 centimeters or something like that, you need to make sure that the fabric will stretch so you will be able to dress the sweater because otherwise if it's too narrow here at the bottom then you won't be able to uh, pull it over your bust so if this is uh, perfect if this is working then you can uh, make those decreases to adjust the uh, the trunk of your sweater and it doesn't matter how the how the yoke is done, if it's a round yoke or a rectangle yoke or whatever. After making the first the first round, round of the trunk, after splitting into sleeves and body, then you will see how many stitches you have there. And then you need to measure your waist and how many stitches or how, how like a measurement, how many centimeters you want for the waist and then to calculate how many stitches you will need to get there. So having the stitches over here, the stitches at the bottom, you can subtract the number of the stitches at the bottom from the one over here and calculate how many stitches you will need to decrease along your body to have that, waist, um, that waistline uh, smaller. So, Having those number of stitches that need to be uh, that you need to get rid of it, then you should start decreasing. And uh, there are many ways to decrease those stitches depending on the style that you will want to achieve. So first, and the one that I don't know, I will do it is to calculate the number of stitches maybe divide the number of rows that you want into segments and have some decreases the same as the, on the yoke if it's a round yoke and uh, divide the length that you need to achieve into segments of three four five rows and see with how many stitches you will need to decrease per segment for example, if you have four segments and if you have uh, 40 stitches to decrease, then means that you will have to decrease with 10 stitches per section. Okay, because it's 40 divided by 10, uh, by four, because I have four sections. So I need to decrease 10 stitches per section. Um, I can decrease them in one row and then have the rest of the rows without uh, without decrease them. I said increase it, <laughs> decrease them. Or you can in those uh, segments to divide those number of stitches that you need to decrease. Now if it's not, um, for example, you need to decrease 10 stitches, but maybe you don't have like uh, the number of stitches at the beginning are not multiple of 10. This is okay, it's fine. You simply know that you need to decrease those 10 stitches or those 40 until finishing the, the trunk of your sweater. So it's perfectly okay. As long as you get rid of those stitches and in the end and progressively not to shrink it over here and then being straight because I don't know if it will look nice. But if you're shaping it like slowly and surely I think it will uh, it will be perfect. Another way of doing it and if you love the style you can try it on is starting from over here under your bows to have those lines of decreased stitches going uh, going uh, down uh, depending on the number of stitches and on the number of rows that you will need to decrease maybe you should uh, decrease at every row maybe not but or maybe start decreasing uh, work a few rows with decreasing and then going straight you need to play with this um, with the style and pattern and see what you like and if you're doing this over here you might uh, want to do them in the back as well so you will have uh, the same design on front and back and another way of doing this is to decrease on the sides only on the sides it's the same as uh, decreasing over here only that you're hiding those decreases on the sides of the sweater uh, every time when doing this, uh, I don't know, maybe two spots, four spots of decreasing, you need to make sure that 
um, they are symmetrical and you have the same number of stitches in between the, um, uh, the decreasing line and yeah this is what you should do is to get rid of those extra stitches that you had you needed for the bust and get rid of them all along the trunk so you can uh, get to the waist to the desired waistline so yeah i think uh, this is it this is what uh, what you can do this is to answer uh, kim's questions i hope that it was helpful i'm waiting for her feedback in case if she needs more clarification about it and uh, we can uh, do more and discuss more about this uh, this aspect so yeah i think i'm done with this uh, this thing and uh, with the weekly journal so uh, thank you so much for being here again with me and um, i can wait to meet you back next time and uh, until then i wish you to have a great week full of yarn full of um, nice projects nice patterns and uh, to have the most of it so thank you so much have a great week see you next time bye